Hi everyone! Welcome to another slow game. In this game, I'm playing International Master uh, Teddy Coleman. Uh, International Master, I think, God, I forget what school he goes to, or graduated or something, but he went to like Harvard or something. Oh, look at this! <laughs> Sorry, I'm all confused because we just started the game and I'm starting the video, but the Carol Khan is like one of my weak openings. Good news though, I just started studying it last night. I've decided to play the stupid Pan of Botvinnik. I'm going to probably forget everything because I just studied it last night. But I finally decided that this is the way to go. I, I don't believe white gets any real advantage, but at least the opening, the position suits my style. So I'm just going to play it, and this will be good practice. I somehow, I feared that he would play this. I don't know why, because I had no inclination. Uh, I had no inkling that he played the Carol Khan. But anyway, Teddy Coleman, here uh, are his stats. 23, 78... Fide, boom, born 1989, so he's about 25 years old. Uh, he got his IM title, I think, about two years ago. He took, I think, a year off school to make sure to get off, to try to get that title, and he succeeded. So, man, if knight f3, bishop b4, I really don't know the lines very well. <laughs> so let's hope he goes bishop e7, please. But bishop b4 is much more popular, so probably I'm... Not going to get what I want. But, you know, I did I did briefly look at this yesterday. Some game with, like, Jakovenko or something in bishop b4. And it transposes into this Nimzo Indian line. If, if I go bishop d3, which is probably what I'll do. Even though I really don't know the line very well. But at least I just kind of looked at it yesterday. So, oh, and by the way, we're playing a pretty slow time control here, as you see. Uh, 40-10, so it's, it's much slower than the last game. I'm just going to do it, whatever. <laughs> uh, and now when they take and we take, like they get some, they gain a tempo pretty much. 40-10, man, that's brutal. Slow game. I kind of wanted to play a little faster, but, you know, if other people want to play slow, who am I to ruin their fun? The thing is, I got to go, after, after the game's over, I have to go shovel snow off my girlfriend's car, which is no fun. And I'd rather it be not too late. What you gonna do? This game is being played um, snowing. I know we are watching it in May, so it's not snowing. But I kind of timed the release of these videos so that we can, we can do like one a week. So it was played during a time when there was snow happening. Um. Yeah, I mean the Karakhan's been a real nightmare for me. Like the the good lines, the lines that most people play. They're just totally against my style of chess. Like, I try to play them, I just don't like the positions, even though I know that they're the way I'm supposed to play. So I finally just said, I just said, screw this, Greg. You're going to play something that you feel remotely comfortable with. Even if you know you have no advantage, you're just going to suck it up and play it. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. Uh, against the knight c6 lines instead of e6, I have, I have some vague ideas what to do. I don't know, you know, I'm just, I'm just trying, I'm trying my best here. Let me make the screen a little bigger for you guys. But this is all still opening theory. He's thinking for, for some reason, maybe because he just doesn't know it that well. I mean, he hasn't been very active in the chess scene uh, in the last year, year and a half. He's, he's played one tournament in like the last year, so he may be a little bit rusty. How's he doing in this tournament? This is my last game. He's drawn two games and he lost one. He he drew he drew the last two guys that I beat. He drew the two guys that I won against, and then he he lost to the the first game I posted. He lost to that guy where I, I lost rook versus bishop. That was so brutal. Um, but he's played three games. I am his fourth. He has not won a game yet. I hope I don't allow him to do so. <laughs> He's a solid player. I played him some blitz once on a train ride home. I mean, honestly, we were both playing, like, horribly, but I know, it was mixed results, you know? And I was higher rated than him at the time, so I thought I would be able to crush him, but it wasn't like it wasn't like I wanted it to be. All right, I mean, I guess I'm just going to castle, because that's, I think, the normal thing to do. I mean, I think they usually take on c4. I'm trying to figure out if like there's any reason I can take on d5, and that would be good now. But I, I don't think... I mean, it's interesting. I can take on d5 and then castle. 
And if he takes on c3, I have like some moves like not you know what? Screw that. I'm just gonna castle. <laughs> Let's not waste time at this point of the game. It's not not much is going on, just waiting for him to make moves at this point. I'm gonna try to move quickly. I did okay at that last game, I guess. I was up on time the whole time. And my opponent kind of blundered in time trouble, which made my life much easier. So that was cool. I wonder how much I'm going to remember about this game I saw yesterday. Only thing I remember is, okay, black takes on c4, we take. And then it's an it's a isolated pawn type opening. So I'm going to play with the isolated pawn. He's going to play against it. Uh, and this can transpose easily from the Nimzo Indian. In fact, it's more common to reach the position pawn takes c4, bishop takes c4, b6 from the Nimzo Indian. It's called the Karpa variation of the Nimzo Indian. And it, t it comes after 4e3. Uh, I wish I could show you, but I can tell you the moves are d4, knight f6, uh, c4, e6, knight c3, bishop b4, e3. And then black plays the move Wait, castles? Hold on, am I right? Yeah, bishop to d3, d5, castles, c5, I forget, actually, I forget how it goes. Oh, no, no, black goes c5, they take on d4, and then they go d5. And it kind of transposes to this opening. I wish that I knew this line better so that I could take advantage of the fact that he's not a huge expert in it, obviously, because he's sitting here thinking on move 8. I mean, it's just main, main theory. Unfortunately, I don't really know very much. I just kind of playing the position. Uh, you know, every now and then, like, I know some tricks and traps and lines like this. Um, but I really just started learning it last night. Like, it's just a total coincidence that I'm playing it today. Uh, before that, I was playing the advance. And the advance against the Karakhan is just kind of, like, bugs me. Uh, you, I feel like white's position is like overextended or something, and I know objectively it's good, but I don't play it very well. So, what can you do? <clears throat> anyway, it'd be really nice to win this game because I had a horrendous start in this tournament with a half out of five. If I could end this tournament with three straight wins and be three and a half out of eight, that would be a nice. You know, that'd be a very nice result after a horrible start. And then we can we can look forward to the next series of eight games. Uh, it's tough, though, man, because some of these people are played, you know, like very talented young players. I mean, Jeffrey Zhang, he's just going to get better each time. Um, and, I, you know, I'm imagining he'll be in my group again next next time, along with the Grandmaster I played. So it's gonna be it's gonna be tough, man. And we got some new players coming up, uh, joining the tournament. Another GM, another IM, who will probably be playing me. So it's, it's like gonna be even tougher next time. And I didn't do so great this time to begin with. So it's tough life, tough being me. But okay, he's spending a lot of time. Honestly, at this point, there's not much going on. It's just the opening. So I'm gonna pause the video until he moves, and then. Where we then we'll resume. All right, he actually just took on c3. Well, I don't really have a choice. I'll take back. Um, I'll take this. I mean, is he gonna go queen c7 or something? Maybe. Somehow I feel like I can sack the pawn. I could also go somewhere else, like queen d3. I can go knight e5. Like bishop d3 is the move I'd like to play. He can take on c3 then, and I have to figure out whether. I mean, probably a pawn sack wouldn't be the worst thing ever, but it also looks a little a little unnecessarily risky. So probably I'm going to do something like queen d3 or queen e2. I mean, e2 is the more natural spot for my, my queen here. I should probably just go queen e2. And, and then for like knight c6, bishop g5. Then he has knight e4. Hmm. Bishop d3. I don't know. I can't figure out what the heck's going on. No, sorry, if it's nice and c6, it blocks his queen. So, mm. The thing is, I really like my, my. I want my bishop on d3. And queen d3 does a thing where if I put my queen on d3, I defend the bishop, I defend the c pawn. So, like, all of my weaknesses are covered. However, 
I just want the bishop on d3, aiming against the h7 pawn. So that's why I just want to go queen e2. And just kind of develop more slowly. You know, if he, if queen e2, I could even go slow like bishop d2 and bishop d3. Just kind of try to do something against his king side. I do have two bishops. I don't know how much it's going to matter, but it could be useful someday. Bishop to b3. If he goes queen c3, I go bishop a3. I mean, it's interesting. He has to go like rook e8, probably. If rook d8, bishop e5 looks like super annoying. So let's say rook e8. I go rook c1. He, he unfortunately has only one move, but queen a5 is, is a fine move. Hmm. <clears throat> but it's interesting. I gotta take a look at that real quick. I guess I already have. I don't quite. I don't quite love it. Hmm. Bishop b3, queen c3. Ah, I'm wasting time. Let's just go queen e2. Enough screwing around. Maybe I'll put my bishop on b2, and then bishop d3, and then c4, and then d5, and then just open up all my bishops against this king someday. It's a decent idea for a setup. You know, bishop d3, bishop b2, c4. What you gonna do? You gotta be scared of d5 all the time. So I kind of like the idea of a setup like that. Alright, this is a standard looking move. Bishop a3 is probably just gonna go rook d8 or something. See, I kind of want to go bishop to b2, but on the other hand, if, if this doesn't... I, I don't know. It's a, On the other hand, it's like a little strange place for the bishop. Like, what if he stops my pawns in the track? Like, I have to, if I go bishop b2, I'm basically banking on the fact that he's not going to be able to stop my c4, d5 type pushes. And then I'm just going to have, like, nice play with my two bishops. The other possibility is just knight g5, bishop g5. And then, I mean, he has even a move like knight d5 there. I kind of want to go bishop to, I kind of want to go bishop to b2, although it's a little, it's a little weird. But I'm just going to try to, like, push my pawns forward. So let's say bishop b2, bishop b7, bishop d3, knight c6, c4, what the hell, just go for it. Or maybe rook a to c1 first, I don't know. The bishop on b2 is not good unless I get my pawns going. That's that's the thing here, and I, I just want to make sure I'm not, not stupid. Like bishop d2 is a little more flexible because I can still go to g5. Bishop b2 is only useful if I go c4 and d5. And it's like putting all my eggs in one basket, pretty much. Whereas I could just go bishop to d2, bishop b7, bishop d3. You know what? Let's just go for it. Who the hell cares? I When I say who the hell cares, obviously I care. I'm just... I, I'm just aware of the human limitation. Like, I can't... I can't figure it out. It's too early in the game. It's just kind of a judgment call at this point, and I don't know the answer. And it looks kind of fun, you know. If we ever get these pawns going, uh, his position could become unpleasant. Whereas the bishop on d3 is um, a bishop. If I put the bishop on d2, it blocks the rook on d1. It's just a little, it's a little clunky. Um, anyway, waiting for him to move. So again, my long-term plan is put a bishop on d3, put my rooks in the center, somehow go c4, and get those pawns moving, and someday play c d5, open up my bishop against this king, and, and maybe some attacking chances. That's my big strategy at this point. We'll see if I can, if I can make it real. One thing I gotta be careful of when he puts his knight on d5, that it, it's coming to f4 in some annoying spots. 
So let's say I go bishop. Hmm, that's really annoying actually. I don't know, maybe bishop b2 is not a good move. Like, let's say he goes bishop b7, I go bishop d3, he goes knight d5. He has moves like knight to f4, which are like really kind of annoying. I mean, the plus side, I could go queen e4 there, I think, and uh, threaten like some attacks. Maybe it's okay for me. Still, like, I never want to go g3 to stop knight f4 because. Well, that would weaken my, my diagonal for his bishop that will end up on b7. So I never want to like push this cheap on. Bishop b2 is like a very aggressive move. Uh, it doesn't look aggressive, but it's just like based on this long-term thing that maybe I won't ever get to do. I guess we'll see. A safer bet would have been just like... I mean bishop b5, bishop g5, sorry, and then followed by like rook c1, rook d1, or maybe rook e1, I, I don't know exactly. But it would have been a more, a little more standard than, than what I did here. Somehow I'm having regrets. Huge regrets, I wish that I didn't play it. Oh well. So, bishop b7 seems like a pretty normal move to make. I wonder what he's thinking about. I mean, bishop b7 could have been played in like a minute, but he didn't do it. So anyway, I'm going to pause the video again. Oh, wait, I'll, I'll unpause it when he makes a move. See you all soon. Hey guys, what's up? He played the move knight on b to d7. Strikes me as a little odd. I can't quite figure out why, but... It does. Um, let me think. Bishop to d3, knight to d5. Somehow that looks sketchy. <laughs> Maybe he can do it though. But I can go c4, knight f4, bishop h7, king h7, queen e4, knight g6. So I'm down a piece there. A queen a8, bishop b. Oh wait, I know, his, his rookie is defended. Um, I don't know, it seems, seems like weird to not go bishop b7. Hmm. I mean, probably I'm just going to go bishop d3. It's hard for me to resist somehow. Knight d5, knight g5, then knight to, then he just goes knight to f6, from knight to 7 to f6. Alright, hold on, hold on my horses, hold your horses. What if I play like knight g5 right now? I'm sure it's bad, I'm just kind of, kind of having fantasies of like, <laughs> I don't know, sapping on e6, but. It looks stupid. Um, I, I'm gonna go bishop to d3, man. I'm just gonna see. I assume that like knight d5 is not like can't be too strong, so I'm just gonna do it. I need to do it at some point anyway. <clears throat> and if he goes bishop b7, I'm gonna jump at the chance and play c4 right away. <laughs> all right, so now I can go c4 and take his knight away from the d5 square, which was always scaring me. Um, queen f4 is is annoying. I mean, I might have to do something annoying like queen e3 after queen f4, like kind of trading queens, but it could be okay for me. Um, I'm just going to go c4. Just double checking. All right. I feel like I just got to get these pawns rolling. Now, queen f4 is the annoying somewhat annoying reply. Um, I can think about knight e5, but I mean queen e3 looks like what I probably will do. Just kind of trade queens and have two bishops, have decent pawns. I mean the position seems okay to me. 
I think he would have ideas like e5 in those types of positions, but again, I do have these two bishops in a relatively open position, so I'm just going to bank on the fact that I can use them somehow. <sighs> mm, I don't know, queen f4. I could also go bishop c1, can I? Then he probably has queen g4. Because yeah, I was thinking uh, queen f4, bishop c1, bishop f3, bishop f takes f4. I have two bishops, I'm better there. But queen f4, bishop c1, queen g4. Somehow it looks annoying. I don't think I want to go for that. I could I could still go h3, though. And if bishop f3, pawn takes queen. So I don't know, it's actually not, not, that, not that silly. Then you can go queen h5. Mm, maybe that's annoying. But the thing is, this, this position, if he goes bishop takes f3 ever, I have two bishops. I mean, I have weak pawns in an endgame, but I have two bishops against two knights. Could be good for me. It's hard to say. Position's pretty open. I mean, six pawns on the board each. I don't know. Queen f4 looks like a very interesting move. And I just got to figure out whether I'm going to go queen e3 or whether I'm going to go... Do something a little more ambitious. Hmm. Queen d2 is also playable. And oh, then he has queen g4 again, which looks annoying to me. <clears throat> but worst case, queen f4, queen e3 is certainly at least playable. Okay, he does queen f4, couldn't help himself. Uh, let me just look at bishop c1 once again. Bishop c1, queen g4 is the only move that makes sense to me. Now if h4, bishop f3, pawn g4, bishop e2, bishop e2. I got two bishops, should be good for me. So let's look, bishop c1, queen g4, h3, queen h5. This is a key variation. Can I play g4? His only move is queen h3. No, I can't play. I can't play g4. Um, I can go knight g5 though. I mean, it's going to be a queen trade. Uh, it should be slightly better. I, I don't know. Nothing. Uh, I just noticed. Yeah, I mean, it's slightly better for me. Maybe. It's not worse, so that's good. Queen e3 or bishop c1, which one do we want to do? Let's just look at queen e3, queen g4, h3. It looks fine. Uh, and when he goes queen h5, I don't know, position just looks alright to me. Like, like maybe queen f4. Oh, no, no, not queen f4. He's threatening bishop f3, maybe. So... See, queen e3, queen g4, h3, queen h5. Bishop e2? Kind of annoying. Then you can go queen g6. Hmm. If bishop c1. <clears throat> queen g4, h3, queen h5. This is what I'm focusing on right now. One moment, folks. Hmm. Looking for something good there, but not finding it. What was I saying, knight g5 in that position? Looks a little awkward somehow. But okay, he would have to play queen takes queen there, I think. I would go bishop takes queen. And I have to evaluate that endgame. Should be okay for him somehow. Oh gosh. Um, I'm probably I'm going to go queen e3, i got to be honest. 
just seems most appropriate. Sorry, just thinking in my head real quick. Oh boy. Um Because bishop c1 just looks like a little... I mean, my bishop's already in a useful place, you know? It's just, it's just a little annoying, I mean, when he gets his queen to, to h5. Uh, it's like a little annoying. I, I can go bishop to e2, though, like we talked about. Yeah, I guess that's fine. I, I don't know why that's what's the problem there. So queen e3, he can take and try, like, some e5 moves at some point. Somehow, like, like, queen e3, queen takes, pawn takes e5 immediately, maybe. I mean, it's certainly playable. Let's say I go knight takes, knight takes, pawn takes, knight she4. Somehow the position looks just fine for him. Um... I don't know. To me, that looks fine. Oh, you know what I have, though? I have some annoying ideas. Like, if, if e5, I can go pawn takes. And if, if knight g4, bishop f5. That should be alright for me. Bishop takes f3, pawn takes f3, knight takes e5. And I have two bishops against two knights. Um, somehow, I can go, like, rook a d1, maybe. My pawns are a little weak, but... I'm hoping, I mean, I'm never going to be worse with two bishops in an open position, even if he wins a pawn. Still, let's look at bishop c1 one more time. This is a key moment, man. This is, I feel like, a moment where I really need to spend time. So bishop c1, queen g4. Everything else seems a bit silly. h3. Maybe I should just go h3. Hmm. And that's weird. Bishop c1, h3. I'm sorry, bishop c1, queen g4, h3, queen h5, knight g5. Queen takes queen, pawn, bishop, uh, bishop takes. And if he goes e5 there... I don't know, man. Black Black's position seems okay to me. Anytime I go d5, he goes knight c5 and has nice control over the position. That's the thing. Whenever he plays the move e5, if I push forward, he gain, he gains the c5 square. Whatever. I'm just gonna stop screwing around. I'm just gonna go queen e3. I can't figure out what the hell's happening anyway. Let's see what happens. Again, I mean, I could spend more time <laughs> deciding between these two moves, but honestly, I just don't know. I just gotta play one. This one looks more normal to me. Um, I, I do feel like somehow black can do something annoying in this position. I, I don't know. You know what I might do, though? If, and maybe I should have went h3, honestly. Well, no. I, I was a little scared of bishop takes f3 if I played h3. But if he takes and I take, and he doesn't go, like, e5 and knight g4 type moves, maybe I'll play h3 to just forever stop knight to g4, because I feel like that is, like, a really annoying move in a lot of lines when he does this e5 stuff. I don't know. Just an idea. We'll see what he does here, though. <clears throat> Anyway, sorry, I'm reading comments on a YouTube video here. Hey, 
Hey guys, I paused the video for a second because I had to deal with something. Um, you know, black's choice. I think either queen takes queen or, or queen g4 should both be okay. And the thing is, though, I do like those bishop e2 type moves after queen g4. They seem okay for me. Uh, I, I'll go h3 after queen g4. And and then when he goes queen h5, I'll go. I'll probably go bishop e2. Uh, there may be some reason to throw in a move like bishop a3, although I can't figure out why, so I, pro I probably won't do that. But we'll see what he comes up with here. Honestly, I'm going to pause the video while we're waiting for him to make his choice. I mean, he has a choice between queen takes e3 and queen g4. I feel we've analyzed these moves to death already. Um, I mean, I guess knight h5 is, is perhaps some other possibility, but it's like a little weird. So anyway, I'm just going to pause the video, and, and we'll see what he comes up with. Sorry, I'm unpausing. <laughs> I'm unpausing because I'm, I'm looking at knight h5, and actually it's not it's not so bad. It's like a weird move, but maybe it's okay. Although maybe I have knight g5 there. Like, could that be annoying somehow? I don't know. It, it's just funny. I mean, knight, knight h5 just looks like such a stupid move, but... If I go queen takes queen, he takes with a knight and annoys my bishop, and and he's threatening maybe maybe bishop takes f3. Although anytime he goes bishop takes f3, it does become two bishops against two knights, which is like it means something. Even though my pawns are messed up, um, it's nice to have two bishops. But yeah, knight h5 is actually a candidate move that I didn't think about before. So thinking about it now. Tuned out the other two moves. I feel like I've already looked at them as much as I as I can for the moment. Uh, but knight h5, knight g5 looks certainly playable. Um, and then we could just swing the knight to e4 maybe. And we could even go g3 in the future. So I I, I have a weird feeling about knight h5. It just seems a little a little awkward to me. I mean honestly, knight h5 I could also just go knight to d2. And it's like what exactly is your knight doing on h5? So I guess I'm not too I'm not too concerned about it. Therefore, I will pause again and await his move. Hey, what's up? You took the queen. I'll recapture it. Now let's see what he does here. I mean, e5 pawn take. Okay, knight e4. For some reason, I didn't consider this move, although it's pretty pretty logical. Just sticking the knight on on my weak square. So what to do about this? Usually in these positions, you want to trade one pair of knights and just have two knight, two bishops against bishop and knight. God knows why, but it's, it's like an idea. So I'm thinking about rook f to d1 and then knight to d2, just to get get started with that whole idea. I rook f to d1 because I kind of want the other rook on the c file. I want like rooks on f1, and d1, and c1 for some reason. Um, just thinking though of other ideas, but I don't see anything too exciting. I'm gonna go rook f to d1, and then rook a to c1, and we're just gonna see what happens. It's a pretty quick move to make at this point, um, but uh, again, I just. It doesn't seem like the position to spend a lot of time. So I'm just going to put my rooks behind my pawns, and maybe someday they'll, they'll be useful. I mean, the position should be fine for me, honestly. Like, at any moment, like, I could just probably just take on e4 and be at least even, so... That's good news. <laughs> rook c8. I'm probably going to go rook to c1. Feels kind of normal. Um, yeah, let's just put my rook in c1, where it, where it sort of belongs. And then we'll see what he does next. Probably rook d8 or something. I don't feel like I have any, any real advantage here. Not quite sure how to 
how to make I mean, this e4 square is really nice, you know. Like, if he goes rook d8, I go knight d2, he goes knight f6. I'm not sure. I just don't see anything for me here. Don't see any real advantage at all. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll like. Go king, put my king on e2 or something. I gotta be careful though. Like if I drift too much, I could I could end up in a worse position, which is something that happens. Like at some point, I have to decide: Am I gonna try to like slowly win this, or am I just gonna like be happy to draw and make some kind of simplifying moves? Because right now I don't know. I mean, like if I go knight to d2, and he goes knight f6. Like assuming he goes rook d8, like like knight knight to d2, knight f6. I, I don't know, like knight takes knight, even bishop takes. I, I just I would go bishop e2 there probably, but I don't feel any anything special in that position. Like this knight e4 move is just too annoying. Oh uh, whatever. I'm I'm gonna just try to play though. <laughs> You know, it's always tempting to just go for a draw once things aren't going the way you want. But I don't, I don't think it's necessary yet. I don't think I'm in too much danger of being worse. I don't know, though. He has ideas of knight f6 to g4, maybe. Okay, I guess if knight f6, I could even go king f1. Idea king e2. Just gotta be a little careful though. Gotta be a little careful of stuff. <laughs> I mean, no, I mean the, the situation now in my mind. Like honestly, I don't even know what to think about. I'm just kind of like staring at the position. This happens sometimes. Um, rookie eight is interesting. Does he want to go for e5 or something? I guess so. Let me think. Oh man, I kind of want to go like. I kind of want to go. Knight to d2. If he goes knight f6, I can even go knight b3 there, although it's a little weird. Probably I would just take his knight. Hmm. All right, guys. I'm just kind of running, running out of steam here. I just don't know how to how to play this position. Like my pawns can't move so much. I'm just running out of ideas. I'm always scared of him going e5 and getting the c5 square. <clears throat> Like if king f1 to e2, I'm worried like we'll just go like f6 and e5. Suddenly his rook on e8 makes sense. <coughs> um, let's say king f1, f6, knight e2, knight d2, knight takes, rook takes e5. How, how annoying is that? I have bishop f5 type moves. <sighs> oh, maybe king f1. Feels kind of weird though. This is all. I'm really. I don't know what to do. I'm just. I'm just kind of. You know. Thinking. Thinking. Sorry. Sorry that I don't always have things to say. Just trying to come up with some ideas. Like knight d2, knight f6. What well, he's got those superfluous knights, right? Isn't that what they're called? So I could go like knight knight b3. And if knight g4. I can always go rook e1, it's not the end of the world. If knight d2, knight takes, rook takes at e5, bishop f5 looks annoying. Knight d2, let's say he takes, I take, and he does something else, like... I, I don't know. 
Um, just some random move, like like H6. <laughs> I, I, I can't figure out like what I'm supposed to do at this point. It's, it's so good for me. I, I don't even... I don't have much of a plan there. I don't know, maybe bishop e2 to f3, but that doesn't seem very convincing. Bishop c2 to a4. Maybe. That just feels awkward also. What about bishop c2 right now? Oh, he has, um, he has rook takes c4 in this position. Oh, that might be like slight. No, it's probably like even after bishop takes e4. Rook c1, rook c1. I'm sorry, not. Oh, I have rook c7 at the end. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Weird line. Uh. Focus, Greg. What to do? What was I thinking? I forget completely. <laughs> Knight to d2? Well, I was thinking bishop c2, but that's like such a stupid looking move. I, you know, I would just like to go c5 sometime in a, in a way that makes any sense, but I, I can't really seem to make it happen. I'm just kind of running out of ideas. Sometimes I like to think, what would Carlson do? Because he'd find some way to make this interesting, but I have no idea how to do that. He's so good at like um, just kind of keeping the tension in a position and coming up with like very short but effective plans. See, bishop c2. Hmm, it just doesn't feel right. I mean, just to go bishop a4 doesn't even do that much. <laughs> you just go rook d8. So, I mean, it just doesn't seem that that strong. He just yawned, apologize. Uh, let's see, bishop c2. I'm just gonna look at it again. Oh, what if he just goes knight f6? I mean, what the hell? What is my big idea here? Okay, then I have knight e5. So bishop c2, if, if rook... I shouldn't be looking at this move. It's such a strange-ass move. Bishop c2, rook takes pawn, bishop e4, rook takes rook, bishop h7, king takes, rook c1, rook c8. That's fine for black. Um, bishop c2, rook c4, bishop e4, rook takes, rook takes, bishop e4, rook c7. I mean, I may have some edge here. Probably I, probably I do, honestly. <clears throat> It's just like so artificial, bishop c2. I, I don't know why I just keep looking at it. It's like I can't think of anything else to do, so I'm kind of grasping at straws here. But my gut tells me it doesn't make any real sense. Let's think. I mean, I could also just like set up bishop c2 to b3, and then I, I don't know why though. I don't I don't know why I'm doing that. So it's like. It's confusing, man. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna go knight to d2. I just don't know any better. We're gonna start some kind of, perhaps, simplification process. Um, maybe this game will get steered towards a draw. I, I don't know.
I don't mind, you know, draw is not the end of the world in life. Why does it say stuff? <laughs> I have no idea. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just like, I just couldn't figure out what to do. His knights and his rooks effectively block my pawns. Anytime I push the d5 pawn, he gets the c5 square. And anytime I take, I push the c5 pawn, he can blockade it like so easily. First of all, I, I can't push it. He's defending it with all his pieces. But even if I could, he can blockade it really easily. And then I have all these pawn islands, like pawn on c5, a pawn on e3. It's just kind of not so appealing to me. You know, I always wonder what's going on in my opponent's head at this moment. Like, is he thinking about equalizing? Like, what is he even thinking about? Is he thinking he's better? <laughs> Who knows? Probably he's fine with equalizing, because, you know, I know how it is. When you're playing somebody who's, like, a bit higher rated than you, you kind of... You're not super ambitious in positions like this. You're kind of like, okay, let me just make sure I stay equal. And he probably thinks I'm, like, trying to win. I really have no idea what I'm doing, though. You always just assume your opponent's, like, trying when they're higher rated again than you, but really right now, I don't know that I am. I don't really see any... I have no idea what to do, basically. <laughs> um, I'm just making moves. Yeah, you know, and, and like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to make sure that under no circumstances do I, like, allow myself to fall into some potentially worse position. So I gotta avoid that. I mean, I, I don't know. He's, he has two main options here. Knight f6 or knight takes knight. They both look fine. Um, whenever he goes e5, bishop f5 looks irritating. I mean, maybe it's okay for him, honestly. But it's, it's certainly, like, annoying. So, like, knight takes knight, rook takes. If he goes e5, I go bishop f5, and that annoys him. So he doesn't do that. He goes knight f6. And now I have an option. I can go knight b3. With ideas like maybe I'll go c5 someday. I mean, I'm, I'm not very convinced by it, honestly. I feel like you can always still just take it off. But at least it's an idea. Like I can go knight b3, bishop a3, with some idea of c5. and it, You know, it's just... I don't know. It's at least, it's at least somewhat interesting. Huh. Oh, maybe I just go knight b3. He can go a5 then, but then his like b6 pawn can get weak. So it's like a little, a little sketchy. If he ever goes knight g4, I can always um, I can always go rook e1. Seems okay to me. But knight b3 is definitely like a, a more aggressive move than I was intending to play. Hmm. But you know, it doesn't seem so bad. I mean, knight b3, bishop a3, and c5 is my big idea. And then, and then what from there? Well, not really sure, honestly. <laughs> not so sure how that even helps me too much. What if I go knight takes knight? He can go bishop takes or knight takes. Both look perfectly acceptable to me. Because, you know, if, if, like, if he takes, I mean, he really gets this e4 square. I mean, if knight takes, bishop takes, bishop e2, I'd probably play. We kind of talked about that. Maybe he'd move his bishop away at that point. And maybe if I went c5, he could just go knight e4, probably. I don't know, man. I'm probably going to go knight b3, but it's like... I'm not super convinced by this move. Like, what if he goes bishop a6 there? I mean, do I really have any, any inkling of play there? Like, I don't really see it. Hmm. Just 
trying to come up with some ideas here. Having trouble. Hence my silence. See, the thing is, right, both his knights went to e4 square, so it's like a, a moment where trading might not be the best idea. <clears throat> uh, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go knight b3, because keep things interesting at least, but I really don't have any strong feelings about my position, let's just say. No strong feelings at all. Give me a second, though. If knight b3, e5, I'm always scared of this move. Pawn takes knight, knight g4. You know what, knight b3 is a little, a little too much. You know, I'm just going to take his knight. Let's just stop. Stop being crazy. Let's just take it. Before, I, I feel like I'm going to start doing something crazy. And like going for like some kind of variation where I'm thinking I'm winning or better, but I'm totally not. I just don't see the point. Like maybe I can just take an e4. <laughs> I just like totally, uh, totally end, end all the fun for everyone in this position. I don't know. Maybe I take and go c5. Is it so bad? Eh, nah, that looks kind of too pathetic. Maybe bishop a3. But then he has e5, and... Again, this, this e5 stuff. Oh, then I can take his knight, and then take... And then play, like, c5, maybe? Or d5, I guess. I don't know. I have a pass pawn. <laughs> Shouldn't be too bad for me. I don't know, man. I'm going to go bishop a3, whatever. With ideas of c5 someday. Uh, if he goes e5, I mean, it's like I'm just making sure I'm not worse. I'm pretty sure I'm, I can always just take on e4. And, you know, I'm at least even, so. It's nice to be able to not be worse at any point. I mean, honestly, if... if, if if e5, I could probably take on e4, take on e5, and if he recaptures rook d7, and I get the 7th rank, somehow this should be... Uh, it might not be that great for me, though, because... You can go a5, and then rook d1. I, I don't know. can't figure it out. My pawns are weak there. His bishop on e4 is really good. That could be, like, a little risky. I'm down on time now, 13 to 15. Huh. Check my email whenever it's not my move. Can't help myself. Whew. This big conversation happening on one of my videos about whether... Whether it's okay to flag people rook versus rook. I think it's totally fine. I mean, I usually don't do it, but you know, in five-minute chess, if you if you can't if you can't handle getting flagged, don't play blitz chess without an increment. It's pretty obvious. I think there are no rules. You can win any way you want. Um, that's why there's no increment. Increment is the the whole point of increment is to stop flagging. As long as that increment does not exist. Um, you should try to win on time at any possible moment. It's it's just part of the game. I wish, like, the five-minute point ICC had, like, a one-second increment, so I wouldn't ever have to do that. I could feel more... It could feel more chess-like, but unfortunately, you got to play with the rules that you... you have in, in the game that you're playing, and the only rules they have are no increment, so... I play it like a cutthroat <laughs> asshole, basically. Um... Anyway, let's get back to this game. Now, this has been not too much exciting has been happening. 
again, I'm just trying to, like, I mean, things could get weird at some point. He's spending lots of time. We could get in, like, some minor time trouble. But I, I just don't have any idea how to, like, fight for an advantage here at all. Like, no clue. No concept whatsoever on what to do. I'm just making sure I can always just take on e4 and, like, equalize if needed. And, yeah. I, I think this bishop b2 idea that I came up with was just not, not good. It, it gave up too much control over that f4 square. And, and you saw I used queen f4. I was also scared of knight, d, knight d5 to f4. I just think it was just like a weird, faulty, faulty idea. All right, look to d8. I mean, I have no idea what to do here. No clue in the world. C5, is it any good? Pawn takes bishop e4, bishop e4. The problem with the bishop when e4 controls the b1 square, just like a huge pain in the ass. Um, maybe I should go like rook c2 to go like rook to b1 and then try to go c3. That doesn't seem very... That seems horrible. So I put the rook on c2, and then whenever I take on e4, he takes back with tempo on my rook. I just have no real plan here. <laughs> no idea what to do. Um, I might take on e4 and offer a draw at this point. I just... I see no... I, I want to offer the draw sooner than later before I like start to do something stupid. Because <laughs> it's like, I feel like I'm getting there. I'm getting to that point where I'm about to do something like irresponsible. And then have to sit here and defend some stupid position for an hour. So <laughs> let's just think. If c5, pawn takes... What if I go pawn takes? I mean, I have a pass pawn. It seems so easily blockaded, but maybe, maybe it has some meaningful value. I, I don't know. C5, pawn takes. Pawn takes. <laughs> uh, you know, it just looks so weak, that pawn. And his knight on e4 is so good. Let's say he goes bishop c6 there. Let's say I then take on e4. I mean, the position is... And then if he takes on e4, I take on d8, and I can go c6. And I can kind of get a nice pawn on c7. I don't... I can't figure out how... <sighs> Maybe I should do it? I don't know. I'm just like a little worried because I have no idea what the consequences are. But like c5, pawn takes, pawn takes. And then, and then what? Just like totally unconvinced by this, this variation. Uh... Man. It's interesting, though. I don't see anything wrong with it, so to speak. Maybe I'll just do it. Maybe I'll just go c5. You know, so so I'm, I'm very scared of losing sometimes, so I, I, I make chicken-like moves. It's good to, um... It's good to not be a chicken, <laughs> if you can help it. It's just like... It's hard to believe I have anything, but you know what? Whatever. Hold on. Focus, Greg. Slow down a second. C5. He's probably going to take, because otherwise I'm threatening C6. Uh, maybe I'm not threatening C6, but it's like a little annoying. The I just want to see, like, if, if I'm even better there at all, like, 
if I'm like, I don't want to give myself like a worse position somehow. I'm always scared I might do so. But why should it be that I'm worse? I mean, okay, I can always just take on... I'm just going to do it. What the hell? So much psychology that happens in these moments, you know? Where, like, you're just kind of... I don't know. Just kind of, I'm just, like, totally unsure of the <laughs> the position. I don't have any idea whether this is, like, even remotely good for me. Maybe bishop to d5 here. But then I can, like, go for some equality pretty easily. Like, take on e4, take on b6, take on c8, go rook c1, just trade all the rooks and draw. Um, that's not so simple. I guess he has rook a8 there. Oh, no, but he can't take my bishop because of back rank. All right, so he does go bishop to d5. Not a big surprise, I guess. Is bishop a6 annoying for any reason? Maybe. Let's think. Bishop a6, rook c7. Well, first of all, what if I go c6? This is a move worth looking at. Someone's calling me. Let's hang up on them right away. c6. What's the idea? I don't know. My rook, my, my pawn's going to get like stuck over there. Bishop a6. Rook c7. Pawn takes pawn. Rook takes rook. Rook takes rook, pawn takes pawn. Why would I have anything in this position? No idea. Looks totally, totally cool for black. Um, bishop a6, rook c7. Let's see, I go pawn takes pawn right away. He'll probably go, he'll just take back. Um, probably gonna go for a draw at this point. Just take on e4, take on b6, and start trading all the rooks. If he goes rook a8, I go bishop b4 and a3. Easy, easy to draw this, I think. Let me just double check. Hmm. <laughs> Bishop a6, rook c7. Can't find an idea. And pawn to c6 just seems like. What, what I mean? You can just go rook take c6. I'm, I'm on crack basically. Uh. I give up, man. I got six minutes left. Let's be a mature adult. <laughs> just uh. Just go for a draw. Uh, see, I'm worried if I... He's going to get the B-file if I don't take this. So I'm just going to... Let's go for massive trades. Do, 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 do. I noticed he can go Rook takes Rook himself. For some reason I didn't see that. Let's think for a second before I just... Uh, whatever, there's no advantage here at all. <laughs> uh, um, I'm just going to go rook c1. We'll see if he goes for more with rook a8, but I mean... You know, I, I can just go bishop to b4 there. And then a3. and Position looks fine for me. I don't know, I feel like he may have some like tiny advantage somehow, but I don't see how he's going to use it. I mean, just because his bishop on e4 is like a little better than my bishop on b4 in those types of positions. Maybe I should go bishop b2, but then I, after rook a8, I don't know. It doesn't seem to matter too much. I, You know, I like bishop b4 better, because if I go bishop b2, we can go rook a5 in some positions and like laterally move the rook over. Could be slightly annoying. You know, I, I feel like you should go rook a8, bishop b4, like, like make some Lufthansa king, and then try to go like rook d8 to d5 or something. The thing is, I can just stick my rook in this. 
I, I don't see how he's going to win that position, but he can try. He can definitely try. So, I mean, I think he should probably play on. We'll see if he decides to or not. He just decides to call it a day with Rook takes Rook. But, you know, Carlson would play on here. Oh, okay. But this is just a draw now. All right, let's see. I just want to be accurate, but it shouldn't matter very much. Um, king f2, king e7. I'm just going to go king f2. I'm going to put my pawn on a3 and my bishop on b4. It's just like a fortress. Um... I'll check him. It's fun to check people. I mean, the position is a hopeless draw. I, I, I think maybe he thinks I should be offering the draw. I'll just do it. Draw? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> um, you, you know, it's just like I, I put a bishop on b4, go a3, g3, and just move my bishop back and forth. Sure, go for it. He wants to play on for a couple moves. Um, again, you know, he has no, no plan, but okay, if he wanted to play on, he should have went rook a8, uh, now it's just like, what are you really going to do? Um, maybe bishop d6, just to, whenever somebody does, wants to play on, we have to, uh, take it seriously, even though. I don't really think he has any real chance. I'm going to do this, maybe mess the flexibility up of his pawns a little bit. Like, if he pushes the g-pawn, his position could just get a little less flexible. One of the biggest mistakes you can make is when somebody refuses to draw, that you start to get indignant. They're... Um, that you start to say your, your position is so easily drawn that you don't have to think anymore and you start to kind of like stop thinking, moving fast and stuff. <laughs> uh, I lost games like, I lost a game like this before, a really heartbreaking one. I mean this time I really do believe there's like no freaking way in the world. The only reason I offered a draw is because I thought that maybe he wanted to, but he knows I'm higher rated and I'm white and he thought like, okay, um, that it was like my responsibility to offer the draw. But I'm happy to play on. <laughs> happy to play on here. I mean, he's g6 looks. I mean, okay, I guess he could go king to to g6, but like I can't figure out a plan for him at all. Like, what's his idea? It's tough to say, right? There's just no, there's just no idea. There's no, there's no plan <laughs> at all. Uh, all right. I, just, uh, I mean, like, I'm just gonna go here, I guess. Let, let me think. Let me think. Uh, Bishop D six. Is that any good? That doesn't matter. I'm just gonna. Okay, let me just see. Is there anything he can ever do? If the answer is no, I can just do whatever I want. It's nothing he can ever do. But like, why not just play this? What the hell? Just stop e5 for a second. I mean, he can go king f5, f6, and then e5, and I can just take it. And it hasn't accomplished anything. So I'm not too not too concerned here. Not very concerned at all. Sorry, you guys have to sit through this end game because at this point it's really it's really impossible for him to do anything. Because the thing is, 
I don't have to do anything here. And this is the, like, bishops are opposite color. It's just, like, so hard to make anything happen. Maybe I'll mate him if he's, like, not careful. Like, I put my bishop on f4, I go h3, he goes f6, and then g4 is checkmate. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to, like, go a3 and then move my bishop back and forth. And I can't see any anything for him to do anywhere. Uh, let's think. Ah, oh, whatever, a3. Not much to say anymore. I'm just, I just have a fortress. He has no, nothing he can do. Move the bishop back forever. <laughs> back and forth forever. Uh, even in his only plan of like e5, like the king can come anywhere at once. It's just not gonna, not gonna accomplish much. Uh, I'm just gonna make it move one more square. I mean, I guess, no, nah, I can't see an idea. Start with this move. I'll come back. See, I just, I just not sure where it's, what's happening next. Like. I just don't know. Um, all right. Let's just go. Well, I don't want to let him go. I guess I, I guess I'll go. It should be before he goes e5. I can just take. I don't know. I don't know why I'm worried. Maybe I should have went bishop e7. No, no, I'll do that if he goes f6 next move. There is just simply zero plan for black that does anything. And it's going to stay that way. But I will keep the video running because the game is still in progress. See, I'm already getting... It's that problem where you get too, too confident and you think you're going to draw easily. Although this time it's just like a little too... It is a little too easy. I mean, I could take one of my pawns off the board and draw pretty easily, I think. Like the the d4 pawn. I'm pretty sure it's brainless draw. But uh, fortunately, I have it on the board. <laughs> so that makes it even, even, even less brainless. More brainless to draw this. So I'm going to end the tournament most likely with 3 out of 8. Nothing to, nothing to write home about, that's for sure. Um, it's the second highest rated in the tournament, so... Whatever. But at least, uh, at least I ended it decently. Got two and a half out of my last three after a horrendous start, uh, and a start which included a lot of like disastrous conclusions to my games. Uh, what is his plan? Is there an idea anywhere? I mean, only thing he can try is take on G. And that's crazy. Can't take on G two. Um. All right, I'm just gonna go here. If he takes on g2, he's maybe in danger of losing. What are you trying to do, buddy? No idea. Um, I guess bishop f6. I hate defending these positions. You're just so terrified if you mess up. It's like so embarrassing. So I'm going to just keep focusing. <laughs> Stay focused, Greg. So let's say bishop c5, and then he goes nowhere. I don't even know what he's trying to do. I'm going to go bishop c5. Does anyone watching see a plan? If you do, let me know. Although it will be, it will be too late, because my game will already be over. You see, he has a fighter spirit here, though. He's trying. Trying something. I don't know what it is, but something's happening. The problem is, anytime he puts his pawns in, like, a dark square, I can, like, attack them with my bishop. He should probably just maybe bring his king close to my a pawn, and then maybe go, like... I, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. 
there's really, yeah, there's just no idea. I mean, my king defends everything. I never have to move it. I never have to move my g-pawn, my h-pawn, or my e-pawn, or my d-pawn, really, unless he goes e5, which I have to, like, trade pawns. And, and you know, this is why bishops of opposite colors are so drawn. It's just that your bishop defends everything. And he cannot, he can't do anything about it. Like, it would be a lot more interesting if I had one of my pawns off the board. I mean, I, th I still think it would be, like, if you took the D pawn off the board, I still think it's, like, a pretty easy draw. I mean, pretty, yeah, it's pretty easy still. I mean, because, like, what's he going to do? He has no plan still. Um, yeah, I, I think it would be not too hard to draw that. Uh, the question, what if I took my g-pawn off the board? I, I think every pawn except the a-pawn, if you took it off the board, it would be a draw still. Yeah, it, it's just it's just too hard. Maybe I should go g3 someday. i just worried about his king coming to h3. Probably I don't have to worry. I can just go king g1 there. But somehow it feels like a, a little mini concession, so... I didn't want to do it. Um, bishop e7 looks kind of normal. Oh, what the heck are you doing, dude? Yeah, I'm just going to go bishop e7. Now g4, I can go g3 and just chill. Just double checking. Un momento. All right. Yeah, the funny thing is, even if bishop takes g2 works someday, I could just not take his bishop. Uh, it doesn't make any sense, but the point is, this is drawn. Now when he goes g4, I can just go g3. His king can never come to h3 anymore. So I have, like, the most unbelievable fortress ever. Well, let's let's just think anyway. Maybe I'll just go bishop to c5 again. See what he's up to. I can go g3 whenever I want. H5. What is his idea now? No idea. <laughs> uh, um. Like, if I go g3 and I go bishop b4 to c5 for eternity, what exactly is he doing? Nothing. There's nothing even close to happening ever. All right, so I'm just going to do it. Here we go. I wonder why he declined the draw. I mean, because, like, really, what, what what is he seeing here that's, like, interesting. It's good to play it out, but like this is not this is not close to anything ever happening. <laughs> um, I'll just check you. Draw? Oh yeah, off in the draw. Alright, I accept. GG. How come after the game they're, they're from Guernsey all of a sudden? Um, yeah, uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, think what was I gonna talk about here? Yeah bishop b2 is just like a little weird. I mean the game's not like super exciting but I think I should just go uh, bishop g5 or something. Looks kinda normal. Uh, after after maybe knight d7 
I mean, I'm going to look this up real quick in chess base off screen. I'll let you guys know what I come up with. Give me a second here. Just getting it set up. So Udini is saying like like Bishop A three makes sense. Uh, nobody plays like he played. It's like a not a system that people do. And then like ninety five. I mean, it looks pretty pretty reasonable to me. Uh, it kind of makes it hard for him to develop his knight, because if knight d7, knight f7, if knight c6, prob uh, let's move again, I think, wins. Because if queen takes bishop e6, and this, like, the king's coming to g6, obviously he's going to checkmate it somehow. So, yeah, bishop b2 is just, like, a little awkward. I'm just going to run the rest of the game in d. Queen f4, queen e3, take, take. 94. I mean, yeah, like the whole position was just kind of sort of dead. <laughs> um, I mean, Houdini is just not finding any any really good moves anywhere. And, you know, the one thing it's thinking is um, c5, bishop d5. Oh no, it's, it's just even. Yeah, the one the one thing where I thought he had like any chance at all. I mean, of course, the trading rooks is horrible. I mean, not horrible, but he has zero chance to win. Rook a8 is playable. I was gonna go bishop to b4. Um, and I just felt like you know it's gonna be hard for him to win. I stick my pawn on a3. I mean, he has some some chances. Like Houdini is like minus 0.14, but it's hard. You know, I, my my. Defensive chances are better than his winning chances by a long shot, but you know he could at least try to try to win. Uh, but after rook takes rook is zero, I have just have a blockade on the position. So not the most exciting game ever. That happens in chess sometimes. Some games are just not super exciting. I think I just misplayed it pretty early on. I just don't have a great feel. I'm just starting this line, so I need to get a better feel for it. But I do. I like the open positions. Next time I'll play better for sure. Thanks everyone for watching. Um, there might be a week off, and then next week we'll start with a new tournament. See you all later. Bye-bye.